Alors, on est tous rassemblés aujourd'hui euh, pour parler et pour manifester contre le racisme et contre le colonialisme. Euh, donc, pour commencer cela, on aurait aimé reconnaître qu'on est sur une terre colonisée, qu'on est sur une terre qui a été volée. Euh, nous avons une personne autochtone parmi nous, donc ce qu'on fera, on, il y aura deux discours en ce moment euh, d'abord avec Molly et Manu. Donc Molly travaille avec un collectif euh, de personnes bi spirituelles et de femmes autochtones qui travaillent euh, sur la santé de ces communautés de différentes manières. Donc Molly euh, nous fera un petit discours. Tansé, hello. Molly Swain, Nitsika Son, Meti Odepemsu, Esquayo, Umania. So hi, my name is Molly Swain. I'm from Calgary, Treaty 7 Territory um, in Alberta, and I'm part of the growing Indigenous diaspora in Montreal Lake. I would of course like to first acknowledge uh, that this demo is taking place on unceded Haudenosaunee territory. Uh, and having said that, I want to further acknowledge that recognizing that we live and work on stolen territory should be just the first step in respecting those whose lands we are occupying. To be a respectful guest on others' lands requires more than just a simple acknowledgement, and I encourage all settlers and visitors to learn about the protocols and to be a good guest while you're here. So I'd like to speak briefly on the topic of gendered violence and urban indigenous resistance. I'll be talking about some pretty graphic violence, so just a heads up or a trigger warning that that is something that's coming up. So gendered and homophobic violence against us is woven into the fabric of Canadian society. One of the first tactics of the colonizers was to break down the often radically egalitarian social structures of the nations they encountered by imposing their own oppressive concepts of binary gender. Gender, sorry. It's getting there. Uh, and sexuality, along with Christian patriarchy, weakening our social fabrics to facilitate Euro-Christian domination. Mass slaughter of indigenous peoples who did not conform to European concepts of gender, people who would we would consider today to be two-spirit, repressed and destroyed vital parts of our cultures and nations and forced those peoples to the margins when they had been a when they had always had a central role in so many of our nations. Historically, the rape and murder of indigenous women and girls at the hands of state forces and individual settler men during and after battles often included the mutilation or removal of our sexual parts, which would be sold or turned into clothing and accessories to be worn proudly by settler heroes of the frontier. Under settler colonialism, indigenous women's bodies are literally products for the consumption of settlers. We are figured as stereotypical squaws, spiritual earth mothers, and Indian princesses, tropes that render us dehumanized, primitive, and inseparable from the land. The assumption that we must disappear and must always be disappearing to allow settlers' rightful claims over our lands manifests as racist, gendered, and homophobic violence aimed at indigenous women and two spirits. The long arm of the law has never extended its protection to us. The police, the courts, and the legislative and governing bodies the legislative and governing bodies of the settler state function only to criminalize indigenous bodies. From Indian agents and the RCMP to the SPVM and the SQ, the project of the cops and the courts has always been to solve the Indian problem, disappearing us behind bars and on cold winter highways and by silencing us with racist laws and violence. Settler rights to use and exploit the land and settler rights to access indigenous bodies are conflated under the logics of colonialism and capitalism. And indigenous peoples are further devalued even as our lands and sovereignty continue to be violated in the name of progress. Policies of the racist colonial state, the extraction economy, and the tenets of Western liberalism work together to legitimize the genocide of indigenous peoples and implicitly condone the disappearance and murder of women and two-spirit peoples. Urban indigenous peoples are often left out of this discussion, but we are just as vulnerable to the most violent manifestations of colonial oppression. Cut off from our lands and often from our communities, urban indigenous people face intense isolation, culture shock, and a lack of family and social support networks. Despite all this, our resistance is stronger than our vulnerabilities. Settler colonialism dictates that we should assimilate. Instead, we are infiltrating the system, siphoning and redirecting resources and materials to our relatives fighting on the land, making and taking space, organizing our own classes, workshops, skill shares, childcare, programming, creating and distributing our own art and media, 
building strong communities and engaging in long-term and multifaceted decolonizing work that prioritizes comprehensive critiques of and resistance to settler colonial patriarchy, homophobia, and racism. Despite the epidemic levels of violence we experience, we are strong and vibrant individuals and communities, and there are so many indigenous people who are doing amazing work to fight back against our oppression. Find our work, learn from us, introduce your friends and family to our perspectives, defend indigenous women and two-spirit folks, support indigenous struggles, and recognize your own complicity in a system that functions through ongoing genocide. Thank you. Merci Molly, Molly qui nous parlait donc euh, des, des luttes des, 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 des luttes des femmes autochtones et des personnes bispirituelles au Canada, au Québec. Euh, la prochaine personne euh, sera qui va nous adresser, c'est Manu. Hey. I'm sorry folks, but an apology is not enough. And I'm sorry, but to me, reconciliation is not justice. Native title is not land rights. Those are the words of Gary Foley and Robbie Tor, two former Black Panthers and Australia. January the 26th, 1788 was the date that a fleet of military ships from England turned out on the Australian shores and invaded their land. They built a military penal colony similar to Guantanamo Bay. Guantanamo Bay, it was called Botany Bay, Australia manifested from this convict penal colony to what it is today. There has been no treaty with the original people of this land, no consent, and no, obviously there is no jurisdiction as they invaded their land by military force. That's what Australia Day represents to Aboriginal people, they call it Invasion Day. In 1972, the Aboriginal Tent Embassy was created by the Black Power Movement in order to put a term to the official assimilation policy of the Australian government. Four Aboriginals were sent in front of the Parliament in Canberra to put a tent in front of the Invaders Parliament. Why a tent? Because it represented the conditions of life of an Aboriginal person at that time. The Black Power emerged and created health services for the people of their communities. It was called community control. They were taking back the control of their life from the government who was controlling their welfare. The Australian government used black power as a propaganda to put fear in the wider communities through the medias and send the cops with guns. They killed almost everybody. The black power movement has three major principles. Self-determination, sovereignty and land rights. In 1957, Willie Tida, his brothers and sisters from Palm Island provoca provocated a strike, a strike for basic human rights. It's only after a 10 years referendum, after that strike, that the Australian government finally accepted to count Aboriginal people as humans for a second class citizenship in 1967. Before that date, it was not illegal to kill an Aboriginal per person because they were, to the eyes of the white Australian policies, part of the flora and fauna. Today, Today, you don't need to have a white Australia policy and, and legislation anymore or a white book anymore in Canada to know that it is still embedded into people's minds and behaviors for settlers to continue to run their show and that we are still the first nation treated and second, the first who comes and last. Behaviors such as celebrating the date of the invasions, symbolic gesture like holding the flags of those who are our oppressors, the rapes and murders of indigenous women, the illegal land grabs, the charter, the situation today is not much different. There is still racial discrimination and a high rate of murders in custody. 80% of the carceral population in the Northern Territories are Aboriginal men and women. The Australian government suspended the Anti-Racial Discrimination Act, a useless piece of legislation to implement the Northern Territory intervention. The Northern Territory, the Northern Territory intervention as has been extended by both of the Australian governments and gives the free go to the media to openly discriminate Aboriginal people, the free go to the cops to take control of any Aboriginal organization, and to incarcerate an Aboriginal person for no reason, which is the case right now. If you're caught with a beer on a mission, which is the equivalent of a reservation here, you go to jail for one year and a half and you pay $75,000. The Northern Territory Interventions was created by government when they suddenly realized that there was mining interest in those regions. Elders, songmen, healers, and any person who passed down the culture are now all stuck in institutionalized and bureaucratic concentration camps built by the Australian government and asserted by the police forces 
obviously with the participation of the Canadian government. The apartheid started